Hello and uh, welcome to another lecture. So we're going to start looking at constant coefficient second order linear ODEs. This is part one of section 2.2 .2 in the book and you can get the book for free as a PDF at this uh, URL or you can uh, you can browse it as web pages or you can even buy uh, an expensive uh, paperback if you want. All right, so what are we doing? So we're looking at this sort of problem. So here's an example. Uh, so uh, there's the equation and we have some initial conditions. So we have an initial value and initial derivative at zero. Right? And we're trying to find a solution to this. So first find a general solution and then find the particular solution solving the initial conditions. Right? And to find a general solution, we're looking for two linearly independent solutions. Right. All right. So it's a second order linear homogeneous equation with constant coefficients. And that's that's the key thing here for us. So if you recall, constant coefficients means that in an equation like this, in a second order uh, linear ODE, uh, it's that the, these guys, the P and the Q are constant. The F doesn't need to be a constant, but we're going to look, be looking at homogeneous um, equations at this point, so the f is just not there to begin with. It's just zero. So, uh, so just the p and q, right? So, but by constant coefficient, we mean that those guys are constant, right? Um, all right. So, let's try to find some solutions, right? So, let's guess one, right? Uh, so, what function? stays more or less the same when we differentiate it. It's the function that we keep using, right? It's the exponential, right? So let's try, uh, maybe that's not going to be e to the x, but we've already seen, uh, you know, solutions and similar equations uh, uh, where the solutions were e to the something times x. So let's, let's do that. Let's do e to the rx and let's see what happens. Now, uh, it's called an ansatz, and uh, in German, it's apparently the initial uh, placement of a tool at a workpiece or something, you know, something to that, that effect. Uh, so they actually have a word for that. Uh, but that's what that's what mathematicians use for this. It's it's a guess. It's a guess for the solution uh, with some undetermined parts, and we're trying to figure out what those undetermined parts uh, are. In this case, it's the R, and we need to figure out which R will give us a solution. All right, well, let's try to plug that in. So to do that, I need to differentiate. Well, that's easy. The exponential is easy to differentiate. Y prime just gets an R out, and Y double prime gets R squared out, right? So I plug it in, right? This is my equation, and if I plug that in, right, I plug in, you know, what y, y prime and y double prime is into this equation, I get, I get this, uh, this thing over here. Now, I notice that everything here depends on e to the rx, right? So I can divide through by that, right? And what I'm left with is this equation over here, r squared minus 5r plus 6 equals 0, right? And I can solve that. I can factor this, right? Uh, you can solve it using a, a quadratic formula. However, you want to solve this, this quadratic uh, quadratic equation, right? So here, the solutions are two and three, right? So so those are two R's that should work, right? If I uh, if I plug in e to the two x and e to the three x uh, into this equation, I should get that those are solutions. So you should check that, right? But it's basically because because of what we did here, right? It, it, that they have to be solutions, right? And only those R's will work. No other R will work. All right. So we're still considering this thing. So let's check that there are these guys that we got are linearly independent. Now, if they weren't independent, it would be uh, you know, well, one would be a constant multiple of the other, right? So we would get this. Again, we could divide by e to the 2x, for example, and we'd get that e to the x is c, and c is a constant. So that's that's nonsense, right? So uh, 
either 3x and either 2x are linearly independent, two linearly independent solutions to this equation, right? So, so here we have a general solution. Okay, so now that we have a general solution, we, uh, we want to solve for these C1 and C2. So we differentiate, right? We need to plug in these guys over here. So we differentiate, we get this, uh, uh, you know, this expression over here for the derivative. So let's plug in uh, zero, right? The, the point where we're evaluating this initial condition. Um, and uh, well, we have to get one for the value, right? So we plug in zero here and we get that, well, e to the zero is just one, right? So we get C1 plus C2, right? That's supposed to be one. Uh, now, similarly, this thing, uh, when I plug in zero, I'm supposed to get seven, right? So when I plug in zero, again, the, the e to the zero just becomes one. So I get uh, I get two C1 plus three C2, it's supposed to be seven, right? So I have these, these two equations over here. I have to solve them, like two equations, two unknowns. So it's just a little bit of algebra. Right, so you can solve it in in any way whatsoever. For example, we could, you know, maybe we could multiply this first equation by two, right, so that I get two c one out here, right, and then I could subtract, uh, you know, the the two equations, and so I'm gonna get, uh, you know, when I subtract the two equations, I get something like this. This thing just goes away, two minus two, zero, right. So I'm gonna get five is c two, right. So c two is five. And uh, therefore, C1, C1 is minus four. So, all right. So, so we plug that in, and we have our specific solution. All right. So here is the general uh, general idea. Suppose that I'm given. Uh, an equation like this where a b and c are constants i try uh, a solution of this form i plug it in i get this if i divide by e to the rx i get this equation this is called the characteristic equation of this od right i solve this guy and i get generally i'll get two roots r1 and r2 and those two roots will give me two solutions, e to the r1x and e to the r2x, right? Now, it's a bit more complicated if, if this root is, is a doubled root and it's you could also get uh, complex roots. We'll save that for next time. Uh, but that's basically the idea. So here's the, um, here's the theorem. Uh, so suppose that r1 and r2 are roots the two roots of the characteristic equation so if if these numbers are distinct and real uh, meaning this the thing that's under the square root the discriminant um, is positive so that i could take the square root and still get a real number uh, uh, then and i get a real positive number so uh, so plus and minus gives me two distinct uh, roots uh, then the general solution is this right precisely what i you know what we said before now if if the roots are equal that means that if this thing is just zero so then i only get one root um then we actually get a second solution by multiplying by x right so so we will get uh you know this is this is the way to get uh, uh get a general solution because normally i just get e to the well, there's only one R, it's so e to the Rx, uh, but what is, you know, how would I get a second solution? And it turns out that multiplying by X actually works. All right. So let's, uh, let's see this in practice on something that we know already how to solve, right? But let's see how it, you know, how it looks in this, uh, in this uh, setting, right? So. If I have this equation, the characteristic equation is uh, is this, right? R squared minus k squared. I factor that, that's R minus k, R plus k, right? So we get e to the minus kx and e to the kx are the two linearly independent solutions, which which is, we had that, right? That's that's uh, that's what we said, uh, you know, uh, the solutions were before, or we guessed at them before, but 
yeah, obviously we also get it uh, from this, uh, uh, you know, from this technique, right? So let's solve another one. Suppose that I have uh, uh, this equation over here. Let's let's find the um, let's find you know the general so, uh, general solution to this. So if I look at it, I can just write down the characteristic equation, right? It's the, the coefficients here are one minus eight plus sixteen. So one minus eight sixteen, right? So that's what I have. Now dead factors uh are like this. It's uh it's a square of r minus four. What does that mean? That means I have a doubled root, right? I have two roots and they're both four, right? So really I have one root. <laughs> but it's basically um uh you know basically sort of two roots uh you know that are the same one right it's, it's you can think of them as as two roots uh, uh you know that are really 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 close to each other right uh so so here the general solution is uh uh is this which is well basically the two linearly independent solutions that i'm getting is uh, e to the r uh, uh e to the 4x and x times e to the 4x uh right so you know, those are just two ways of writing that, right? So that's the general solution to this equation. All right. Now, in a um, in a sense, is doubled root um, thing. Um, you know, if I choose a random equation, it's gonna have two distinct roots. Um, if I choose these numbers a, b, and c randomly, um, then uh, b squared minus four ac is is unlikely to be zero. Right, I have to be sort of lucky to get zero, right? Um, but I mean, these things do occur uh, in uh, in real world problems. For example, you know, one place where it's uh, you know where we'll see it is a, a critically damped uh, mass spring uh, system. Now, there's another reason why uh, why this is uh, 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 why we really want to consider. Uh, you know, you don't want to just forget about it, even though, um, in a sense, it never happens. But in a sense, it does happen, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, because you don't get in the real world, you don't get randomly uh, chosen equations. You get the equations that the, the universe imposes on you, right? Uh, so, uh, but it's also uh, like this: the way that I said, uh, you know, just before. Um, a doubled root is really you can think of it as two roots very close together, right? And so you could, uh, you know, in a sense, uh, say it's it's uh, it's actually, it, it you know, there's a really nearby equation, uh, which has almost the same solutions, uh, but it really has two roots that is very close by. Now, the thing is, is that in that case, uh, if you're doing some numerical computation, uh, sometimes that leads to uh, uh, it was called numerical instability um, because you're you're taking one over uh, really small numbers uh, essentially, and that's that's gonna you're gonna overflow something, right? So it's it sometimes leads to leads to trouble, and it's uh, and it's actually better to think of it as a as a double root, even though they're like very close by. All right, let's let's actually see why this uh, uh, this thing comes out in, in a different way. Um, uh, then just while I, I mean it works, I, I guess before I, I didn't really give a reason why it worked. Uh, it just uh, it does work, right? Uh, so, but let's let's see a reason why it does work. Um, uh, in terms of this uh, thinking that uh, a doubled root is really two roots very close together, right? So, so think of having two roots; they're distinct but very very close by. Right, so we have superposition, right? So R one and R two are constant, right? So therefore, this expression is a solution, right? Because it's, um, you know, I'm just taking a linear combination of these two solutions, right? And this is uh, also where, uh, you know, if if you're, uh, as I said before, you know, uh, if, if you're trying to uh, <clears throat> trying to get these solutions, you know. You you get uh, 
1 over a very small number. R2 minus R1 might be a very small number, right? Really, in this case, let's try to take a limit of it, right? Um, if we take a limit of R1 goes to R2 or R2 goes to R1, what is going on? If you think about what this means, this is sort of like a computation of a derivative. If I think of e to the rx, but I think of it as a function of r, not x, then, well, that's the limit of some difference quotients, and the difference quotient look exactly like this, right? And I'm, you know, I'm basically looking this, this is the, the um, slope of the secant line, right, at two points, r1 and r2, and I'm letting those points, uh, you know, letting one go to the other. That's exactly the derivative, right? Slope of the secant line as, as this limit goes, uh, you know, limit of R1 goes to R2, let's say, right? So that's why I'm actually getting this expression because that is the derivative of e to the uh, Rx in terms of R, not, not X, R, right? So that's, that's, a, that's an argument for why, uh, why this does work, right? So uh, it's, 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 it's kind of a cute, <laughs> cute argument, maybe too cute. Uh, but uh, but it's, that's, that is sort of the idea that we're getting, um, uh, you know, we're getting these sort of solutions when R1 and R2 are close. And that's actually, that's actually close to this thing, right? So, so once we take the limit, we get that. All right. So, um, all right, so next time we're going to look at uh, what happens when we have, when the roots are complex. So we'll have to sort of talk about complex numbers um, a bit more uh, in case, well, you, you've probably seen them in, in high school, but, uh, uh, or, or previously in some, in some calculus, but, uh, you know, we'll just uh, say a little bit, you know, about uh, what they are and, and, and how, how they, um, you know, how they come up here. All right. So, uh, see you then.